Hello, hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jonah from Spotlight, and I am thrilled to be diving in today to everything about growing your email list. We have gotten these questions time and time again, as we are big proponents of email marketing. We get people popping in the comments, okay, but what do you do if you don't have an email list yet, or you're starting from scratch, or you don't have a lot of money, you can't buy a list, anything like that. So we're gonna be covering a few ways you can grow your email list completely organically, completely for free today. Super excited to dive in, but before we get started, for everyone that's here today, hop in the comments. Let me know. Well, there, where are they? They're over here. Hop in the comments. Let me know who you are, where you're tuning in from, something you're excited to learn. And at any point throughout the event, feel free to call out a little bit more about yourself, maybe where you are in the process of building your email list. Also, feel free to ask any questions. If I don't answer them right away, I promise I'm not ignoring you. I've set aside time at the end to make sure to cover all the questions we get. Got a few people tuning in already. And also, feel free at any point to share if you have any ideas or things you've been doing to grow your email list. One of my favorite parts of these events is not just getting to hang out and teach you all, but also learning from you. So feel free to call out any of those things. Promote yourself in the comments. Let us know what your platform is, what problems you're trying to solve. Love hearing all of that. And if you have to get away from the computer at any point today, or you weren't able to make the live event and you're watching the replay, there will be a replay available. It'll be here on the Spotlight by Teachable YouTube. Like and subscribe if you're having a good time. And it'll also be on the spotlightapp.io website, as well as emailed to you if you RSVP'd for the event. So don't fret, all of this information will be available later. And I'll also make sure to call out some additional resources we have for you as we go through the event today. But just want to call out people tuning in. We got Kara, we got Lisa tuning in from Maryland. Uh, we got a bunch of other folks from Virginia. Louisiana, India. This is awesome. Um, and then Chattanooga, Canada, the Netherlands. This is great. So awesome to have you all here today. And thank you all too. I'm seeing people are sharing a little bit more about where they are in their process of building a list. I want to make sure that everyone gets value out of this. And ultimately, I'm going to lead with the fact that you are going to need to employ a few different strategies to grow your list. That's how you're going to grow the best and how over time you can make sure that you're attracting a variety of clients to really make everything robust and make sure that you have a clear funnel set out. So with all that said, and I'm getting some great questions already here. Kira is saying, how to categorize email people or can I send them all, all my different things? That is a great question. So we're not getting too much into the weeds of segmenting and all of that today. But Kira, I have, I've saved your comment for later. I definitely want to get to that later. So if I don't near the end, throw that in again. That is a great question, but I'll try and point out throughout the event where you can start segmenting people uh, so that you you have that and you can use that appropriately. Because in, in short, no, you should not be sending every email to everyone that's not using any of these platforms to the most benefit that you can use them. So let's dive in today and get to it. If you're new to email, I'm going to cover some of the basics first. So if you already understand funnels and stuff, tag along with me for just a couple minutes. But for anyone that is new to email marketing or has recently gotten into it, you've probably asked yourself, really? Email, it seems so archaic. And with all the other fancy, sexy ways to market yourself that are there nowadays, TikTok, Instagram, all of this. It's easy to ignore email, but at the end of the day, everything should lead back to email and email is still king and one of the only platforms that you own, actually own. You can carry your email list with you anywhere you go and no service you use or anything owns that list. It is yours and it's one of the only ways 
that you can own your audience. So just a couple stats so we can all get on the same page on why email is so important. Email still has the largest audience. Facebook, I believe, recently passed the 2 billion users mark. Well, email, there are 4 billion daily email users. So that is, it is just the largest platform. And someone is saying that their video is a little fuzzy. Uh, let me know if that's on my end. It might be on your end. Double check if you're watching on YouTube that you have the highest resolution selected. Um, but I'm not getting no, any notifications here, so I think I think I'm good on my end. But call out if video or audio is a problem. I definitely want to make sure everyone can hear and see me. All right. Email is e also one of the easiest ways to grow an audience. 31% of marketers say email newsletters are the best way to nurture leads. Email allows a lot of customization and automation. So although it may take a minute to set a lot of these systems up, once they are set up, they can automatically nurture your audience, which is just something you can't do with just about any other platform. It's the preferred method as well for marketing. Four out of five marketers say they would rather give up social media than email. So that should give you an idea of its priority for people who are experienced in the field. And like we've hinted, it has powerful customization ability. You can segment specific campaigns to people who are interested in specific products. So you can build a large email list of people generally interested in your platform and then market specifically to individuals who you've already run through certain cycles or workflows so that you can make sure you're getting the most out of those customers without bugging everyone else. So in general, if you haven't heard of a funnel before, I just want to lay it out real quick. A funnel is one way that we can visually conceptualize these systems we build. So on the right here or on your right, on my left, we have uh, a basic outline of a funnel. You might, if you search, find a bunch of different models for funnels or flywheels, which are similar but more cyclical. They're all ultimately the same and all revolved around the same idea, which is just being able to visualize how a customer flows through your platform. And today we are gonna be primarily talking all about the top of the funnel. So this is where we are throwing a wide net, we're experimenting and we're providing value in exchange for emails. That's the name of the game. That's what we're doing at every part of the process. And I want to outline a couple mindset tools here because mindset is super important throughout. And I want you to use these as just a general guide to check yourself at any point. If you're wondering, am I doing the right thing? Is this, is this going to work? Is it valuable? So your number one tool for capturing emails is to provide value. And the number one way you can do that is by solving problems. So Solving problems for people and exchanging the solution to those problems for email is one of the best ways to grow your email list. And again, you're going to have to use a variety of strategies, but this is true all throughout everything we do. The other thing you want to do is remain consistent. So once you start a newsletter, once you are providing value, whatever systems you have in place, be consistent with them. And that doesn't mean you have to be sending emails weekly, daily, even monthly. So long as you set an expectation for your audience and meet that expectation, then you're on the right track. And make sure when you set those expectations that they're also reasonable for you. So you don't have to go out there saying, I'm going to send an email a week if you don't feel like you can provide enough value in a weekly newsletter. Take your time, slow it down, and make sure that every email is valuable to that person, that segment, to your whole list, so that when you send those emails, they are being well received. They're being, you know, they're being absorbed, they're being opened, the links are being clicked. You want to make sure that every email has value. So consistency comes from realistic expectations for you and your audience. 
That's where consistency comes. There's no algorithm here. There's no magic number. A lot of people have opinions, but at the end of the day, we at Spotlight have seen creators succeed with all sorts of models for how often they send emails and what they're about. The important part, again, is just setting those expectations that you can meet and then blowing them out of the water. And the last thing here is just to be authentic, whether it's to your email list, to brands you reach out to, to anyone you're talking to, make sure to authentically represent yourself. That's what will be the defining factor between someone buying from you and someone else who has a similar product is the fact that you are the person selling it. So be willing to be yourself. It might take a minute to find exactly the right blend between using smart language and smart copywriting and finding your own voice. But once you do, settle into it, be yourself. That's why people are, are subscribers. That's why people are there. So one other thing I want to mention before we dive into specific tactics is that to take full advantage of any of these systems, you are going to need an email platform. So Again, if you're new, we're not talking about getting on your Gmail and sending individual emails to a bunch of people or CCing a bunch of people or BCCing a bunch of people. That is not going to be an effective long-term strategy. That may be where you start if you only if you're starting totally from scratch, but eventually you're going to want one of these services. Uh, these are three that I really like. I'm a big fan of MailChimp and ConvertKit because they both natively integrate with Teachable. So if you are here thinking about building, um, if you're thinking about building courses or coaching products or downloadables, anything you can do with Teachable, those two are going to be fantastic. All of these allow you to do relatively the same thing. So mostly it's just important to get one and get started. Like I said, you own your email list. So at any point, if you need to change platforms, you can export that list, upload it to a new one, save all your segments, all of that information. These services have made it really easy to swap back and forth so that they can get people to swap to their service. So don't worry so much about which one fits. Ultimately, the difference between them come down to design, what tools they give you for designing workflows and emails themselves, how you want the emails to look. And it comes down to how you pay. MailChimp is based more on how many emails you send. So if you have a really large list of people and you're sending a lot of emails, that's going to be more expensive. ConvertKit is you pay by subscriber. So how many people are on your list is what you pay, not how many emails. So you can do a little consideration up front, but once again, just get started. And I do mention Flowdesk as well because I'm a big fan. They're who I use as a service. They just have a flat fee regardless of how many users you have, emails you send. It's just 40 bucks a month. It's really easy to use. You can build really beautiful emails. So if you are in a design or creative forward industry, I recommend them. And you can integrate it with Teachable using Zapier so you don't lose any of that functionality. You just have to have one more service in between, but all of that is possible. Also, if you already are signed up for a different service, there's no need to switch or anything. Don't worry about any of that. That's not necessary until you have a purpose, a reason to change platforms. And like I said, all of these do basically the same thing. They allow you to integrate your branding and have beautiful emails that match your brand in every way. They allow consistency because you can schedule emails and create powerful workflows. So workflows, for anyone who doesn't know, is basically you can create an automated workflow where if someone signs up for your list, they're going to get a automated series of emails designed to lead them on a path from one point to another. So that is incredibly powerful. Again, one of those things that takes a, a second to set up at first, but once you have it set up, it works for you and just you can optimize it and improve it over time and not have to build those emails every time. 
All of these platforms also allow segmentation. So to Kiera's question about how do you categorize email users, segmentation is saying certain people are interested in certain things. So you can take your list and segment it into groups based on where, what, how they came to your list, what they're interested in, various links they click. There's a bunch of different ways to create segments. And last but not least, once again, I want to say this because it continually is asked, you own your email list. None of these platforms own your email list. If you're ever going to sign up for an email platform and they imply that they're going to own it, that's just not true. That's not how they work. None of these platforms own your list. So you can switch at any time and move over and you're not using anything. Uh, Michelle is asking real quick, I want to say this, does Teachable integrate with Wix? Um, not natively, but through Zapier, yes, you can integrate with Wix. So it's totally possible. You just have to get comfortable with Zapier as well, um, which ultimately is super valuable. Once you get comfortable with Zapier, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. It's an incredible application. Um, so I recommend checking that out. And Teachable does have uh, blog articles and tutorials in their help section on how to set up Zapier. So what are the strategies we're talking about? So I'm going to talk about four strategies today. If you've been to any past Spotlight events, you know the first one, lead magnets, we've gone deep into. There's endless lead magnets you can create. They're easy to make, deliver, and ultimately create evergreen value because once you create a lead magnet, it can live out there in the wild. Yes, you have to promote it, but it, it continues to work for you, right? So those are great. Then we're going to cover trading newsletters. So regardless of the size of your audience, you can trade audiences. Say, I'll, re, you know, I'll feature you if you feature me. We'll get into the details there. Trading content is the other one we're going to talk about. So making content for people in exchange for them sharing it and calling you out. That's another great way to build from the bottom. And referrals is a little more bottom of the funnel, but it's a system you should absolutely have set up so that people have an incentive to recommend your newsletter or your email list to recommend that other people subscribe to it. You want to give them incentive to do so, so that you have a full cycle naturally built in. So let's cover these one by one. So again, like I said, we have gone into lead magnets like crazy. So today I just am covering a few basic ones that are really easy to set up, but go check out the Spotlight by Teachable YouTube channel and look through the past events. We've done a whole ton of events on various lead magnets you can use all the way from newsletters to mini courses. So there's endless opportunity for lead magnets and creators are always coming up with new ways to capture emails. So these are not, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just three approaches. So newsletters are a fantastic way to get started and arguably just a great thing to have right off the bat. You can send them once a month, once a week, whatever you think. But essentially, a newsletter is low effort. It's easy to deliver. You can keep really niche and simple, makes a newsletter easy to deliver value with. There's little to no design required. You can add graphics and callouts and all of this, but it can just be text if you're offering value. And newsletters are also easy to track. You can track your audience's interest with clicks and CTA engagement analytics. So you can drop links to specific blog articles or other videos or content you've made into your emails and then make sure that your service, your email service platform segments people based on what links they click. So Kara, just calling out another way you can segment your audience. If you're sending a monthly newsletter to your whole audience, but you're trying to slowly segment people, include a link to a specific product or a blog article or something that highlights another segment and then tell your email service to take anyone who clicks that link and drop them into a segment of people who are interested in that. So one way you can segment your audience, right? 
Another great way to start is with email courses. So you can build a small email course that is a series of five to 10 emails, and each email is a step in the process towards solving a problem a problem your audience has. This is also a great way to trial course ideas. So if you're interested in building a course with Teachable, try building an email course first. It's all text-based and you can ask people continually to reply. So these are really easy to automate. You build them once in a workflow and you can then have anyone who signs up automatically get these emails. They're bite-sized, so you're solving really simple problems, very bite-sized problems. It distills your expertise into an easily consumable format. So you don't want an email course on how to become an underwater photographer. There's too many elements there. But you could do a short email course on lighting or how to choose the right camera or how to get your first clients, right? The individual problems that make up the bigger problem of becoming an underwater photographer are all great opportunities. And like I mentioned, they help you build curriculum. So in the process of running an email course, as people go through it, make sure to ask them to reply, let you know if they had success or if any problems, and your audience will start to help you build curriculum that you can then turn into other courses. And then you also know with email courses that you're getting high value leads. These aren't people just interested in your newsletter or general full general information or a specific lead magnet. They're people willing to take time to engage and learn from you. So that is a high value lead. So I'm going to keep coming back to Kira's question because there's so many ways to do this. So Kira, you would want to say that anyone who signs up for your newsletter maybe enters a general segment and also a newsletter segment. Anyone who signs up for your course would enter your general segment, your email course segment, and the specific course segment. So then now you can market to those people either based off of whether they're just interested in general, if they're interested in future email courses, or if they're interested in the specific topic of this one course. So another opportunity to segment people. And you do this in your email service by saying anyone who signs up through this form gets dropped into that segment, right? And then just like with the newsletter, you could embed certain links or paths within the email course that then also lead that person into a different segment. So I'm going to keep trying to outline that. Kara, let me know if this is giving any more like clarity to that process. And then another really easy thing to do is templates. Help people kickstart their endeavor or their goals um, based on uh, some system or, or thing you do regularly in your industry that other people might do and not know how to do take that and turn it into a template. I want to call out here, Lisa saying, does Gmail segment? No, that is why we need to use these email services to do this. Gmail doesn't segment and it doesn't automate any of these things and it doesn't allow you to design beautiful emails. So that's why we need one of those email services, MailChimp, ConvertKit, Flowdesk, Desk, anything like that. That is going to allow you to do that kind of segmenting and more specific marketing. So templates are also fantastic because they're really low effort. Like I said, if there's something you regularly do, like client outreach or anything you've optimized for yourself or templated for yourself, turn it into a template for your audience. They're really high value for your audience. If you can help people get 80% of the way there and then they just have to input their information, that's so valuable for people. And people love the hand holding. They love doing less work. So I highly recommend adding templates to your to your batch of uh, lead magnets. And they're also great for upselling. So you can include links and call outs to your more expensive products within your templates. So if you wrote a template saying, you know, it, once again, let's link this all together. You could have a um, you could have an email course about how to get your first client as an underwater photographer, and then you could have a template that is for outreach, client outreach, right? That says, "I am insert your name, blah blah blah, 
so that they don't need to learn how to write a good email. And then in the template, you can upsell by saying, hey, if this template was good, buy my whole course on getting clients, right? So you should be upselling and pointing to your other products with every lead magnet, but templates are especially good, <coughs> excuse me, because you've gotten people halfway there or 80% of the way there, then you help them achieve a goal. Now they're especially interested in doing that better. The other thing is templates can be sellable. So right off the bat, you can use them as a lead magnet, but if you find out a template is extremely valuable, then you can sell it as a digital product to people outside of your email list. So maybe you give people the template for free who join your email list, but anyone outside of it has to purchase it. That's totally fine. We've seen a lot of creators do it and it works really well. And once again, I just wanna say when it comes to lead magnets, the possibilities are endless. You really, can test and come up with so many different versions of what people might exchange their email for. And it's really that. You're offering value in exchange for an email. There's so many ways to do that. Little tip from Jay Klaus, just to give an example of another kind of lead magnet. I'll also call out Kay Putnam, who is the master of quizzes. But uh, Jay did this in a re mentioned this in a recent Twitter thread. Uh, about lead magnets, which was awesome. I recommend going and following him. He gives regular, regular content and value here. But a quiz is a great thing because it gives people understand, it helps them understand something about themselves or gives them their next step and it can give them a way to express themselves to others. So I, people like taking quizzes, right? Because it narrows down what kind of person they are. And Jay makes a great point here. It's important the quiz outcome needs to be useful. So not just like, you know, what Harry Potter house are you, but what kind of photographer should you become might be a version, right? And not so not just useful for you. It should also solve a problem for the quiz taker. Excuse me one second. Had to sneeze. Thank you, everybody, for Keep it along with me here. But uh, let's go into the next one. And these next two are fun because we don't see a lot of people doing this, but it really does work. So another way to grow your email list is trading spots on your newsletter. So another reason why newsletters are fantastic to employ is you now have a way to trade the value of your list and your newsletter to help grow. So the basic ask is just, will you feature me in your newsletter if I do the same? That's all you're saying, right? Like in my next newsletter that goes to so many people, I'm going to say, hey, you need to check out and sign up for this person's email list or check out their product or anything like that. And you're asking the person to do the same thing. Who should you contact when doing this? I mean, you can reach out to anyone with a newsletter, but in general, service-based creators, so creators who are offering actual services are a great fit because you can highlight those services and it doesn't compete with any products you have. So to keep with this underwater photography thing, if that's your platform and that's what you're trying to teach people how to do, you could reach out to someone who offers um, who offers coaching on on building brands and say, hey, my email list of 200 people are photographers trying to build their own business. I see you have a course on starting your own business, becoming a freelance business. So I'll call out your newsletter, you know, if you call out mine for anyone that might be interested in photography. Communities are also a great place to focus here. So Facebook communities, um, any sort of paid community, Patreon, anything like that are fantastic fits uh, for this approach because it's really easy. Again, right? You're just, it's just call outs. It's a little bit of copy and a link. That's all you're asking someone to do and it's all you're doing for them. And local businesses are also highly undervalued. There's a lot of local businesses 
that have email lists, whether or not you know. So local theaters, local venues, things like that have collected emails from selling tickets or having clients or even just through their payment system like Square or things like that. And if there's local businesses around you and you want to build a audience of local individuals, they usually are very excited to be highlighted, to be call out. It's free marketing for them, right? No matter how small, don't underestimate because for them to reach 200 new people or 100 new people even is an opportunity. And they're likely, they most local businesses also have pride in their local community. So there's that element too. You're not reaching totally out of the blue. You're saying, hey, I love your business and I'm part of this local community. Why don't we both lift each other up, right? It's a really easy ask. A little tip here, just to put this in context, in a recent blog I was reading, they called out honeypot marketing. So just to look what this would be like in a community based, if you were targeting a community, check this out. So they said, say you're selling a subscription box service for new moms with all sorts of goodies for infants, from food to toys, clothes, and more. Get a mom, or you if you're a mom, or could go hang out, Go join one of these groups as a new mom, right, that has so many followers in it and simply comment in the group. Say, looking for feedback. Has anyone heard of this company? Your company. I see they have 50% off your first box, but I'm skeptical. Any insight would be appreciated. And boom, you just attracted a hundred, well, attached a hundred thousand potential buyers with honey. So, this isn't even an uh, like trade offer. This isn't just kind of sneaky slipping into communities and marketing yourself. But you can further bolster this by contacting the person who runs the community, getting their consent and being able to hit the group even harder. Right. So just an example of what that looks like out in the wild. The next one is trading content. So it's a very similar idea, but the ask is a little different. If you're comfortable making content, whether it's writing articles, filming yourself, making TikToks, whatever kind of content you make, the question is, if I make content that highlights your value of your company, right, will you share it? So this is kind of in the model of like making ads, free ads for businesses and then saying, hey, I made this ad for you. Do you want to call me out and share me on your newsletter or on your social media? Can we do a joint campaign for this thing I made you for free? So that's the key. You're working for free to make the content, but you're selling it to them in exchange for call out and growing your list. Seen a lot of creators make great use of this. And this is a little better geared to some other formats. So contacting product-based creators, creators who are selling specific products, they always need further proof of value. So if you can say, hey, I loved your course, I took your course, I want to make a piece of content highlighting your course, or I already made it. If, if I give you the rights to share it, will you share it? Will you call me out and promote signing up for my email list? Great option. Brands are fantastic for this. And once again, don't underestimate the value of your list, no matter how small. More and more brands are interested in micro influencers, micro audiences, because those creators have very direct relationships with the people on their list. So reach out to a brand, even if you think they might be too big for you, because usually these brands have hundreds, if not thousands of various marketing campaigns going on. And if you make it super easy for them by saying, I already made this piece of content that champions your brand and makes your product look good. I want to put it out, but I want you to share it as well. That's an easy ask for the brand and takes very little effort for them to employ. So once again, great fit. And the other one that is highly undervalued here is nonprofits. Nonprofits love free stuff. They do because they're trying to operate on as little a budget as possible. So if you make free content for a nonprofit and offer to share it and promote their platform, and all you're asking is for them to feature you in their newsletter or on their website or social media, that is an easy sell. And I'll preface this with, this is not financial advice and I am not a tax advisor or financial advisor, 
But in most cases, if you have an hourly rate or time that you charge to make content, you can write that off as a donation because you are donating your time to a nonprofit. So just another reason to attack this, that is a great way to make this worth your value even more. You're getting call outs and potential subscribers to your service and your newsletter and your email list. And you're also able to write off the time it takes to make that content. So I do not see enough creators targeting nonprofits, but especially if there's nonprofits working with anything in your industry, it also looks really good for you because you are collaborating with uh, with causes and things that your email list and your services will likely match well with. So just another version from the same article of what this looks like, right? This is an audience barter. So no matter how big your social following or email list is, this uh, this will really move the needle for you. Audience barters has been one of my most effective growth hacks to grow this newsletter. When I had only 5K subscribers, I bartered four ads in my newsletter for one ad in a marketing newsletter. They had 30,000 subscribers, easy peasy. This can work for any industry though. Instagram takeovers, bundle sweepstakes, where you and your, uh, where another brand offer a free product in a bundle, but you both promote it, right? So there's so many ways to go about this. And this is even a different version than anything I mentioned, but you can get really creative. You can also build products with other brands, right? And then anyone who signs up to get that product is going into both of your newsletters. So there's so many ways to make this work. But if you're comfortable making content, start making it for other people. To be honest, that's what I do, right? Aside from working for Teachable and Spotlight, I have my own platform, but I make content for Spotlight and Teachable to also get out here, build trust so that all of you who see me, learn from me, like learning from me. If you're interested in what I do as well, you go to my platform and you can find all of that out. But there's my point just being there's so many opportunities when you're making content for other brands and they will also lead to paid opportunities. If you've done it for other brands, then more brands will reach out to you. So I do want to say that both of these, both trading newsletters and trading content, there are some systems that you can use to make this outreach much easier because most of your effort is going to be an outreach. The content is easier to make and all of that, but you do need to reach out to other brands, creators, nonprofits, all of these to see if they're interested. Well, a couple tips for reaching out. And this is something you are going to do just in Gmail, right? Because you want this to be a personal inquiry. You are personally reaching out to a brand or a creator. So this is not through your email service. But when you reach out, a couple tips. Keep it short. Make clear right off the bat what you're offering and what you want in return. That is number one key to getting responses here. And you're going to get a lot of either no responses or no's, get used to the rejection and the failure. You want to reach out to a bunch of people and make this part of your monthly routine to continue growing your list. No fluff. You don't need to flatter people. You don't need to blow up their platform or anything like that. This is a very simple exchange, and the more simple you can make the first point of contact, the more simple that person will feel this is going to be for them, the more motivated they are to do so, especially if you don't have a huge list and you're reaching out to someone with one that's a lot bigger. So another thing is to be systematic. Template your emails and use the tools available to make it easy. A couple tools for you are Hunter, I.O., and Mixback. So when it comes to getting emails, knowing who to send an email to, especially when it comes to brands and communities, you don't just want to go to support at apple.com or something like that and send an email. It's going to get lost in a whole bunch of garbage other emails. You're not going to get any responses. Hunter IO is a service where you go and you drop in a website and it'll tell you all the emails associated with that website. And you can start targeting individuals at the organization. So this is how you find the personal emails of people in organizations or businesses. Sorry, one second. 
Need a little coffee refresher there. Uh, it is free to get started. You can do, I believe, 25 searches a month for free. So that's plenty to get going. Uh, and it's really easy to use and you will get better responses. The other big tool I want to talk about here is Mixmax. So Mixmax is kind of a combination of an email platform and your Gmail. So it allows you to build automated workflows and outreach templates within your Gmail. So rather than just building templates in Gmail, you can set up a series of emails. So you have your outreach email. It'll automatically fill in the person's name, whatever, whatever, um, whatever you want to fill in. So you can create templated spaces that get automatically filled in. So it still feels personal. Uh, and then you can create a workflow for automated um like follow-ups. So you don't just want to reach out once. You want to reach out with your initial offer and then follow up two days later, a week later saying, hey, just double checking. Are you interested? Hey, one more time. Going to try one more time. Are you interested? People are busy. So don't be afraid to reach out a few times and try three or four or five times before you write someone off as just not being interested if they don't respond. And then what exactly to say, right? I said, keep it short. Well, this is exactly everything in an email. Say who you are, start with a brief introduction. Who are you and how did you find them, right? How did you learn about them? Have you used their product? What are you excited about, right? Then immediately, what are the benefits, right? What are they going to get out of this? So once you've said who you are, how you found them, what are you asking, and what are they going to get out of that? And in the past example, you saw you could get creative. You can offer four spots in your newsletter for one in theirs. You could offer four pieces of content for one call out on their newsletter, right? You may have to mix and match the value to fit right, but you will find at some point a sweet spot depending on the person you're reaching out to. And the last thing is you do want a clear call to action. So if you're interested or not interested, please reply to this email with yes or no. That's the minimum, right? You can include some links to your website or past newsletter trades or things you've done, but make sure that there is a clear statement of how, what the next step is. So if you're interested, say yes or click this form to get started, something like that. You want to make sure that there's no ambiguity in your email on how you can move forward if that person is interested or also that they tell you if they're not interested so you can take them off the list of people that you're reaching out to. So the last thing I want to talk here is referrals. And I do want to answer quick. Molly Peoples was asking a question, so I want to get to that. I have a lot of clients' emails from their intake forms, but they haven't given permission for marketing emails. How do I take advantage of my list? So Molly, that is a little tricky. Um, oh, these are great questions. Uh, Molly, I'm going to leave this question up so there's context for the replay. Um, there's a few ways to do this. So First and foremost, you can send an email to all of those people asking for their consent. That's the easiest way to start. It's called like a, a, a double opt-in. So basically, most email services should allow you to send an email to your audience saying, if you are indeed, if you do want to be subscribed to this list, click this button and that'll opt them in. You'll lose subscribers doing this because some people won't want to, but that's good too, right? We don't want subscribers on our list who aren't interested, especially if we're paying for those subscribers. So that is one way. The second thing that you can do is on the intake forms for your clients, you can include an opt-in button. So there's no reason not to do that. It may feel a little impersonal. Um, Molly, I happen to personally know uh, your work, so it may feel weird uh, having that, but it, there's really no reason not to. You could have it automatically unchecked, unchecked, but you'll be surprised how many people do opt in. So moving forward, you want to employ that as well. But you will have to do some work to activate the list and reach out and say, do you want to be on this list before I do anything with it, right? Because you do need consent to market to people. So referrals, 
So making clear here that referrals is something you should have in place no matter what, regardless of what other strategy you use. And this does sit more on the end of the funnel. So you may only offer referrals to people who have bought your products or engaged in it. There's a bunch of different strategies, but essentially you're telling people who are already on your email list that there's an incentive for recommending and bringing new people to your list. Most email platforms allow you to provide that person with a customized form that says where they come from, or you can just tell people to let you know when they've recommended your list. And there's a bunch of different things you can offer. But once again, right, we're using people already on our list to get back to the top of the funnel, support more people coming into the funnel. So you can do this by offering discounted products. So if you refer someone to my email list, you're going to get 10% off a course I have or a free consulting session, something like that. Just be reasonable with it. If you have a big list and you're offering consulting services, that's that's going to be hard to upkeep and a waste of your money because that's one-on-one -on -one time. You can offer access to content. So maybe you have gated content that you can only access by referring someone to the email list. So this is kind of like a meta version of a lead magnet. It's a lead magnet incentive within your subscriber base to get those people to recommend more people to join your email list. Or you can offer straight cash or donations. I don't necessarily recommend offering straight cash. The best way I've seen creators do this is saying for every referral, I will donate $10 to this charity or a charity of your choice and people can choose one of three or four. This is a great way to do it because there's no direct money exchange with your subscribers, but people can feel good with the fact that by referring someone to your email list, they've effectively donated through you to a nonprofit. This is also something you can write off again as your business. So this is a great way to do it. If you're already interested in having regular donations to a nonprofit, this is just another way to combine efforts and say, well, on top of regularly donating, I'm going to take a chunk of everything I donate. And for every referral, I'm going to donate in that person's name or give them a tag or a call out on social. Right. So this works really well. Just to illustrate this idea, uh, Caitlin uh Bergwan, I always mess up her last name, recently had a Twitter post about this um, and called out some important things. She said one mistake that she makes or sees people make is asking for referrals before they've actually experienced the product or certain things. So don't in, you know, if you're going to offer referrals, make sure that someone's been in your list for a while, that they're involved, that they want to be there offering brand new people the ability to refer others doesn't generally work well and it starts to feel like an MLM or something it's going to result in more unsubscribes than growing your list and then just as far as like what then someone else tweeted about this referral program saying they love the reward so they're offering Donation per referral, right? So the kind of thing I was saying where you're donating to a nonprofit for every referral you get, or you can do like a raffle or something. So if you refer some someone to your email, if someone refers someone to your email list, they get entered in a raffle or draw for free consulting options, right? Something selfless, something fresh and inspiring. So this is a great, great system. Referrals are going to be valuable down the line. And it's not something you need right away, but it is something that is easy to set up. It looks good. You can promote it as press. You can show others how to do it. There's a bunch of value to referrals, right? And once again, be creative. What you offer for referrals is not fixed. These are not rules I'm giving you. They're just ideas. So take these ideas, use them for yourself, mix it up, experiment, give yourself a timeline for experimenting, right? So if you're going to try a new lead magnet or, or a new referral program, say, I'm trying this for a month, make it clear to all your subscribers what you're doing, and then test it, see if it's worth your time. If it is, keep doing it. If it's not, leave it alone, right? But when I say be creative, I don't just mean try new stuff all the time. 
try something specific for a specific period of time, evaluate it, and then optimize it, maximize it, or get rid of it. So I do want to call back before we wrap up today, and we are slowly approaching time here. So drop any questions you have in the comments. I want to make sure that this was valuable. But ultimately, these are just some ideas, but every good platform uses all of these, right? Even up to the biggest level, the bigger you get, the more you just target bigger brands for trading newsletters or for trading content. Your referral program can get more robust. Your lead magnets, you can have more of them. And all throughout, to call back to Kira's question about how you segment, all of these are opportunities to segment, right? So someone that comes from another person's email list gets segmented. Someone that comes from a call out on social gets segmented. Someone that comes from a referral program gets segmented. There is no such thing as over segmenting really with emails because you, you now have specific groups of people that you can target your future products to. So it's really valuable to have a variety of these in place. And once again, over time, you can build these systems to be automated. And as your business grows, you can hire a virtual assistant to run these programs. So they're all free at first, but down the line, you can get some help and really make these better. And if you're ready to do all of these, one thing you will need is at least a home page with a lead capture form you can direct people to to sign up for your newsletter. That you can do 100% with Teachable. And we actually built a mini course that's totally free to show you how to do exactly that. So the link is in the description. It's called how or establish your internet home base with Teachable. And it's a free mini course designed to show you exactly that. You build a beautiful home page that highlights your brand and your business. And it has a little lead capture form that says sign up for my newsletter. So you can start capturing leads with Teachable 100% for free. And you can sign up for a free Teachable account below. It is a free account. It's not a trial period. It's 100% free. So you can get in there, start building courses. You can build your own mini course as a lead magnet. So also, if you're interested in building mini courses, but already have your Teachable School established, check out that mini course. Go browse in it and see what a mini course built by Teachable by Spotlight looks like. So you get an idea of what that looks like. It's also valuable just to see how we structured a clear problem solving from A to B. And... That is everything I have to talk about today. Uh, I know we covered quite a lot. So once again, I do want to call out if it felt like any of this was just scratching the surface because it was, go check out the Spotlight by Teachable YouTube channel. We are regularly doing these events and making sure that we're pro providing you with as much possible value, helping you solve all of the challenges that come with developing your own business, whether you're a digital creative or entrepreneur, it is so valuable to dive into all these resources and just make sure that the little time you have in between your day job and everything is being well spent. Also, hop in the comments. Let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if you had a good time. I want to make sure that all of these events are valuable. So if it was a good time, like and subscribe to the Spotlight by Teachable YouTube. Make sure to turn on notifications so you get notified about future events. And if you have a second, also, please, in the description as well are all of these resources, um, but please fill out the survey we have in there. I really want to make sure, we really want to make sure that all of these events work for you. So in there, we just give you the option to let us know if there's specific things you want to learn in future courses or future webinars, future things like this in these events. So please go fill that out if you have a minute. We do read through that. We do read all of your comments. So if you go and try one of these and it works or doesn't work, come back, let us know. We love hearing back from you. And thank you everyone so much for joining us today. I'm so glad you all had a good time. It's always a blast hanging out with you. And make sure to tune in tomorrow um, tomorrow we're doing an event all about what to do if you put a course out already, but you're not 
getting sales? We get that question a lot. People go through the whole process of building a course, launching a course, but then they're just not getting sales. So we built an event specifically to talk about how you can relaunch, how you can audit every aspect of your current marketing strategy to make sure it's on par. So that will be tomorrow. And then Thursday, we are doing a very short event. It's going to be like 15, 20 minutes, but I'm going to be showing you five tips for Mac users, for creators using Mac computers that can absolutely blow your productivity out of out of the park. I've been obsessed with Mac computers since early on. My grandpa was a big Mac fan. So there's a lot of little elements of the Mac operating system that people just don't know exist that make working on your computer so much easier. So we're going to be diving into that. But all of that said, thank you again for spending your time with me here today and for committing to learning more so that you build a smart and great business. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in future events. Thank you, everybody. It's always a blast. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon. 